But look, w- without further ado, I'm going to bring on our guest. And, you know, one of the main reasons I wanted to bring on our guest is because, you know, Goyim witnessed um, all of this, this massive Muslim migration that is coming into the United States through the airports. And they're being ushered through the airports with no IDs and just getting special uh uh, treatment dream so, card it, right. dream center that, dream act that proves that this whole police state security state we're under is basically security theater and that's why i wanted to bring on our guest he is former technical director of the nsa and he is there's a movie being uh produced not produced excuse me that comes out that premieres next month in theaters about this man's life it's titled the good american but he is not a good american he is a great american so welcome uh, Mr. William Benny, how you doing tonight? Welcome to the broadcast. Well, <clears throat> thanks for having me. Yeah, we surely appreciate it, Mr. Benny. You know, we've had you on several other times, and, and it's always been some great information. And, you know, I, I wanted to bring you on because we see this security state we're under, and it just seems like a lot of it is just security theater. Uh, my co-host a few weeks ago was traveling back from um, Croatia, and he's seen, you know, a lot of these Muslims – getting special uh, preparation, special treatment, you know, in the airports. It doesn't matter they're Muslim. They could be Christian or whatever. But the regardless is, they, you know, they're getting special treatments. And while I'm an American citizen, I have to get, you know, probed when I go to the airport. You know, so, I mean, what is your take on that statement, Mr. Benny? Well, I, th- I think you pretty much said it. They're, they're getting special treatment. And uh, really, I mean— for us to have a country, we need to we need to ensure we know who's coming into our country, who they are, you know, what their background is, things like that. Something to vet them, and uh, I don't think that any of that's happening now. Certainly not to any degree. Yeah, no, no doubt, a- absolutely. Like you know, you you've pointed out in many interviews where you know you you've shown that um, you know with the NSA, it was more about contracts and money than it was protecting the American people. You know, if you could briefly, could you, you know, most people that listen to our show are very familiar with you and your work, but could you briefly, you know, just give, you know, the new listeners a quick background on, on, um, you know, your story? Well, I, I was, uh, for about 30 years, I was the, one of the primary guys on, on warning for the Soviet union. I was the guy who looked at all the stuff that they had and, and figured out what they were doing. Um, uh, and then after that, I became the technical director, basically uh, what I called the world, which meant there were about 6,000 analysts involved in analyzing every country in the world. And so I was the technical director for that. And so I had to look around and uh, try to figure out what the main problems were that try to solve them so they could actually produce meaningful intelligence on you know targets of interest. <clears throat> At that time, we were going after targets of interest. We weren't going on after everybody in the planet. So uh, that's, what, that's what I worked on in the 90s, and I put together, along with my SIGIN Automation Research Center, um, a process called ThinThread, which was a, <clears throat> a very targeted approach to pulling information off the web that pulled only relevant data out so that your analysts could actually succeed and they wouldn't be buried, because even back then, uh, they were buried in so much data, and they didn't have the capacity to collect it like they do today. But that, that, so my job even back then was to take the burden off them of looking at meaningless information on people who weren't relevant to any problem we were trying to analyze. And that's fundamentally what I did with that targeted approach and did it for very little money, and it was too cheap. And so they threw it out and went for an uh, industrial solution, which uh, basically fails and has continued to fail. It's really great at collecting data. But it's really bad at, at providing people with any understanding of what they've collected. We, your your thin thread program. How much money was it costing the taxpayers? Uh, it cost us from scratch to uh, operational in three separate sites uh, three million two hundred thousand. Wow! And how much was Trailblazer and the other programs that followed that are failed? How much were those programs? Well, just just for the Trailblazer alone, uh, uh, it was a minimum of four billion and <laughs> uh, maximum of about eight. Wow! Billion. So, so we go and from was, three million to four to eight billion. But there was this follow-on program called Turbulence, which also took about half a billion a year for about five years. So, well, Wow. And, and I guess they, you know, shelved your program because they couldn't make enough money on it, correct? Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> yeah, and, and the, uh, in fact, we knew at the time 
that uh, contractors, uh, you know, big contractors wanting the contracts from the Trailblazer program were lobbying Congress to get our program canceled. Wow, that, that's sickening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the phone with a great American. He has a movie coming out next month called A Good American. When we come back, we'll play the trailer. It's Mr. William Benny. Uh, he is a whistleblower and former NSA technical director. <clears throat> look, this guy is a great American. He's put his life on his line. So look, Call us up. Yeah, call us up. 504-556-9696. We'll be right back. Senator, thank you. Senator Gravel, same question. The, the, other than Iraq, uh, three most uh, important uh, enemies to the United States. We have no important enemies. What we need to do is to begin to deal with the rest of the world as equals. And we don't do that. We spend more as a nation on defense than all the rest of the world put together. Who are we afraid of? Who are you afraid of? I mean, it is unbelievable. The military industrial complex not only controls our government, lock, stock, and barrel, but they control our culture. Senator uh, Edwards. Senator all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. You're listening to Battle of New Orleans Radio. We have <clears throat> Mr. William Benny, the former technical director of the NSA, on the line with us. And I wanted to play that clip because... You know, Mr. Benny, it seems like the more money we dump into the, this military industrial complex and the surveillance state, just it seems like, you know, the more more things happen, the more terrorist attacks happen. It's just like the education system. The more money we dump into it, the dumber the children get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's exactly right, because the philosophy of the way they're proceeding is exactly wrong. I mean, they're they're t taking a path to failure. Well, their whole objective is to collect everything in the environment, and what that does is it dumps everything on on a, a very few thousands of people to figure out what what all of it means, and they just can't get through it. And they uh, they get dumped on every day. There's a new pile of stuff to go through, and they can't make it through any of it any day, and so they can't see a threat coming. So therefore, what happens is people get killed, the threats are executed, people get killed. And then they go in and clean up the mess. And then when they find out who killed it, killed them, then they have lots of data on everybody. So then they can go in and get all that data on that person once they know who it is. Hmm. But by then it's too late. Yeah. So what that means is what they're doing is they're 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 making and putting us all in jeopardy, um, and they're doing that for money to build up their empire. And then th they collect more data. They add more people. They build an empire, and it still continues to fail because it's a vicious cycle, because it, they're doing, trying to do too much with too few people and depending on people to do it, and that's, that's a, an outline for failure. And so we all pay the price. And what I call this is the military-industrial complex uh, happiness management program, whose uh, uh, vision statement is keep the problem going so the money keeps flowing. And the consequences is some of us have to die occasionally to keep it going. Wow. I mean, Mr. Benny, once you, you, you started figuring this out, you served in the Air Force, correct? Uh, Army. Oh, Army, yeah. excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I, sorry. Remember, I remember you served, though. Um, I mean, when you found that out and, you know, going looking back in your military career, I mean, did that really make you sick? Yeah, it does. I mean, everybody uh, really, uh, in the military at least, you try to do the right thing. Um, you know, when I was in, everyone was really trying to do the right thing, except for some of the general officers who got uh, who got uh, mixed up in uh, pol pol politics, like the Joint Chiefs and so on, and then they got corrupted by doing that. And so they, you know, they they end up um, screwing up everything, <laughs> which, which which, for example, happened in Vietnam and, of course, in in Iraq. That that that, that whole thing was a fiasco too. So. Uh, you know, and the politicians don't help at all because they have no common sense. You know, they're just in it for they, they had this vision, I guess, that they're right and everybody else is wrong. I'm not sure, but it, it certainly is uh, disjointed from the general population of the United States. And so I, th I think the Bernie Sanders part and what's happening with, with uh, Trump here is a reflection of how people feel about their politicians. Right. I mean, so it's a matter of seeing that, the, well, they've failed us so long, for so long, and in so many ways, I, th I figure we should fire them all and start anew. No, I, I agree. You know, everybody is sick, you know, of the establishment. You know, everybody is fed up, so we're just reaching for something, you know, reaching for anything, um, you know, because we're just sick of it. You know, we're sick of sending our, our boys and girls to war. You know, I got an idea for the senators that always want to send us to war. 
um, go send your sons and daughters first. You know, send them on the front lines, and then uh, and then come talk to me. Uh, you know, you go do that, then then maybe uh, maybe I'll listen to you. Um, but until That's you, right. I'm, I'm, but how many have done that? I mean, <laughs> there's so few in there that have. So no, no, absolutely. I, I have a question for you, Mr. Benny. I mean. They're recording. They're, they're sucking all of our data and our information. Almost, it seems like in live time now. Are they able to use this information against us? Um, you know, in live and real time now, or it's just basically a bunch of useless data. No, no, no. They they can do it if they're targeted. For example, um, most of it's done by law enforcement when they have a tip about somebody. They go into the data and look at them. It, it, there, there is no oversight of the FBI and DEA and uh, CIA going into the databases at NSA, which they have direct access to, hmm. but they have no oversight of that whatsoever. They always talk about oversight of the NSA analysts. Well, they're not the ones doing the analysis of domestic collection. It's the FBI, DEA, and CIA. So, uh, you know, <coughs> they're not even looking at the right people for oversight. And, of course, it's all being done, all this collection on U.S. citizens being done under Executive Order 12333, which has no oversight whatsoever either. Wow. I mean, you brought up the DEA. You know, that, that goes kind of into this parallel construction. Can you kind of explain to the listening audience what, you know, parallel construction is and how the DEA and, and some of these agencies can use that, you know, against us? Okay. What, what the D, this was reported by Reuters in August of uh, 2013. Uh, it's on the web. If people want to go query it, they can find it. Just do N DEA and NSA, and you, you should get it. Uh, back back then, they were interviewing some federal agents, and the agents were talk talking to them about the Drug Enforcement Administration's uh, SOD, Special Operations Division. That group was put together to look into the NSA data to find evidence of crime so they could pass off tips to, pre the, to state and local police to arrest people. But they can't give them the data, you see, because it's acquired without a warrant on, on the fiber optic networks inside the U.S., mainly by a program called Fairview. If you do NSA Fairview and a Google, you'll get it. You'll see all that data about that. Uh, but uh, all, that, all that data is used by them to initially arrest people, um, and it's acquired without a warrant, so it's not admissible in a court of law. So what that means is the police have to uh, do what is called a parallel construction, that is they use normal policing techniques to go find the, uh, some probable cause data that they already know where it is, so it makes it easy to find that. So they used uh, standard policing techniques to find that, and then they substitute that for the NSA data in the court of law to, to try people, and that's called parallel construction. Hmm. And what that means is they're committing perjury because they're violating the constitutional rights of the defendant every time because they're not, uh, he has the right to challenge discovery of information against him in a court of law. Uh, when he's taken there. And, and the, in the case of uh, Amnesty International versus Clapper, uh, that case, the Solicitor General, that was challenging the constitutionality of NSA collecting this and using it against people in a court of law. Uh, well, in that case, that made it to the Supreme Court. And the Solicitor General of the United States lied to the Supreme Court to get that thrown out. He said, anytime any of this data was used against someone in a court of law, that they, the defendant and their lawyers were told. Well, that was a lie. Nobody's ever been told. Wow. I mean, Interesting. I mean, that's, that, it's sickening. You know, I mean, and nobody gets in trouble for this. But yet, let me walk down the street with a crooked toenail and uh, make sure my grass is too high. And I'll have code enforcement in my yard. <laughs> and then I'll have police uh, handcuffing me. But yet, you know, they, they, you know, commit these treasonous and criminal acts against the American people. Look, right, right by my house, Mr. Benny, there's two churches. There's one Catholic church, I mean, right across the main street from my house that they've erected. Um, they put stingray equipment inside the, uh, the, the, the bell tower. And I mean, it, it, it and then I, you go down the street and the Baptist church on top of it has the same exact equipment. So I, I'm seeing, especially in New Orleans, we've been federalized so much with a lot of this, this grant money um, that, you know, we, we're getting all these federal programs, especially from DHS in NSA, and I'm just seeing the stuff being erected right in front of my eyes. You're willingly going to accept that, though, and they're going to call it the Patriot Act and this and that and give these Americanized names so that you think it's good for you. Yeah, it's not good for us. Well, it's not used for anything that uh, has anything to do with terrorism. It's used for police operations. Hmm.
Wow. And, it's, uh, and it's a direct violation. I mean, even the national, uh, the, uh, NS, the NSLs from the FBI that they issue to people saying you can't tell anybody about it or any of that, mm-hmm. that was ruled by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals when it was challenged in 2012 as un- illegal and un- unconstitutional. So, and, and the FBI dropped it so, so quickly because they didn't want it going to the Supreme Court from the Second Circuit. You know, it goes up to the Supreme Court then. They didn't want it going to the Supreme Court because it got there and the same ruling occurred. Why? Then, then it would be public knowledge across the entire U.S. instead of just the New York area with the Second Circuit. So uh, they, they dropped it quickly, and they're still issuing national security laws as far as I know, but all of them are done and, and are unconstitutional. That's already been ruled in the court of law. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, it's very disturbing. Um, and it's the same here with the, with the uh, you know, with the, all they're doing is trapping the locations of all the cell phones when they go by with these devices. So, even if you turn your phone off, correct? That's, yeah, that's right. Okay, that's, listen, it's a little off topic, but on topic. You know, we were talking about earlier, uh, actually last week, we were talking about how people are willingly going to give up their rights, Mr. Benny, uh, whether it be gun rights or um, privacy rights. This and that, and, and or they'll blame. Oh well, if we don't do this, if the government doesn't look through our emails or our phone calls and, and our Facebook, uh, you know, ISIS is going to get us. I mean, I saw it when I was coming back from Croatia. I waited for my pat down instead of going through that TSA machine that looked like a radiation machine. Of what? And, and what was weird was people older than me, adults and business people and professionals and college educated people were looking at me like I'm the craziest thing that ever walked the earth for waiting. They're like, what are you waiting for? I'm like, no, go ahead. Go into that machine. I'm waiting for a pat down. You know, it's a lot healthier. And they're like, are you crazy, man? Uh, Time's money, dude. You know, like uh, radiation, the government wouldn't do that to us. They wouldn't give us cancer. And and, 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 and they, they, it's crazy as though they're smilingly and willingly calling me crazy and saying that they can trust their government 100%. When, you know, people are getting cancer at 45 and 44 and 38 yeah. now, let, let, let and it's getting it younger and younger. Way. Let me put it this way. That, that business about you have to trade privacy for security, that's been the fundamental lie they've been pushing from the beginning. Yeah, a- Amen so, to that. Amen to that. Ladies and gentlemen, you listen to Battle of New Orleans Radio. We have a great American patriot, Mr. William Benny, on the line with us. He has a, a fantastic movie that I can't wait to see that's coming out next week. It's called A Good American, and you can you can go to goodamerican.org, I believe it is, and you can watch the trailer. Looks like a powerful film. So please check it out. Please support Mr. Benny. He put his life on the line to bring you this information. You listen to Battle of New Orleans Radio right here on 990 AM, WGSO in the heart of the Crescent City. The building mass graves within the states. You and I live vaccinated. All right, we're back. Battle of New Orleans Radio with Mr. Benny. Uh, we were just talking before the break about how um, the Amer- average American citizen, or as we like to call in the show, a lemming, is going to be willingly giving up their rights, whether it be gun rights or uh, you know, rights at the airport or what have you, Nathan. Go ahead. Yeah, no doubt. And, and I've seen that, especially after the last few of these terror attacks. Um, I've seen people openly calling the talk radio and just willingly just take our guns away already. Yeah. yeah. And, and look, I, I try to explain to him. I said, look, with all these attacks, there's more to meets the eye. You look at Mr. Mateen's father. Uh, he's getting money funneled through a CIA front company to pay for his, uh, his TV show. Uh, he's been to the white house. He's hanging out, you know, he's at the Hillary, uh, deal. So there's more to these terror attacks than they tell us. It's usually not what you know, the mainstream media, there's usually more to the picture. But uh, Mr. Benny, I, I, you know, I know we only, we're short in time, but I, I really wanted to get into the film with you. Um, you know, how was that process? And, and, you know, I'm really excited to, you know, to be able to watch the film next month. And, and how many theaters do you think it's going to uh, be released in? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure. That's being handled by uh, distributors in New York City. So uh, they, they manage all that. I, I, th- this is a- this is the, really the first major film I've been in. I was in Citizen Four at a few small parts there, but uh, uh, I'm I'm not in film business, so I really don't understand all that that's going on. So, right, I got you. You know, it, yeah, no, I understand. But how, how? I mean, how how was the whole process for you? I mean, you thought I mean was it pretty cool? Or I mean, was yeah, I it, mean it was uh, yeah, it was uh, it it went fairly smoothly. I mean, they had a fairly good crew of people working on it, so. 
uh, <clears throat> and I <clears throat> I think uh, <clears throat> they they did a they did a really good job. I think they put together. You'll see it if you look at the trailer. You get the idea. Um, and it uh, it really goes through. Um, it gives you a, a good understanding of some of the under underlying uh, problems in the intelligence community and how you know how they corrupted everything in the end and uh, and why Snowden did what he did. And uh, then there's uh, <clears throat> Uh, Oliver Stone's movie about Snowden that's coming out also around a little later, I think. Uh, awesome. And, and it shows the personal, the human impact of what they have done. The the film I have kind of shows you what preceded uh, the the massive spying and how it was able to be achieved, and uh, then of course executing it. Then that shows how that that comes out in the um, in Oliver Stone's movie. So. And and it really shows the the impact, even though nobody knows it or they don't don't realize it. This is really what's happening to us. No doubt. And I think you know a lot of the point. And I don't know what your take is going to be on this, Mister Benny. But a lot of the point, the you know, mainstream America who watches the mainstream news misses is that in many of these cases. I mean, you look at Benghazi. Okay, that, that DIA report that the FOIA request that uh, Judicial Watch sued and got, it showed that the State Department had 10 days prior knowledge that the attack was going to happen. So, you know, it just goes to show you in all of these events, there is some, usually some government um, uh, notice or they know or have some other information on these events. And and I think, you know, the the mainstream American misses this point that many of these cases, our our government has some sort of involvement. I, I don't know... To the extent, but I mean, uh, there, there's much information yeah. on this. I, I would say that they they tend to let things happen instead of stopping them when they could. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think the the other point I'd like to make is though that uh, you know when when you talk to people and they say, well, I have nothing to hide, so I have nothing to fear. Well, you know, there's one real fundamental point: what what they think is irrelevant. Mm. It only matters what the what the government, the administration thinks at the time. Hmm. Otherwise, what they think, they're not doing anything wrong. They just don't understand. Maybe they are. If they're a part of the Tea Party, the Occupy group, religious groups trying to get politically active, or people trying to do to hold bankers in Wall Street, I'm talking about Elliot Spitzer, accountable for their criminal activity, then you're doing something wrong as far as they're concerned, and they will attack you well, with whatever with ever, with whatever it takes to do it. Absolutely. Well, under the uh, Patriot Act, I believe a misdemeanor, is considered uh, a terrorism, you know, act of terrorism. So, look, we could all fall under this. You know, I mean, if... if and, that, and that gets back to as the National Defense Authorization Act, Section 1021, uh, where it talks about the president having the power to declare someone a, a terrorist threat, to have the military incarcerate them indefinitely with no due process. That is exactly what Special Order 48 issued by the Nazis after the Reichstag fire in 1933 says. It says exactly the same thing. You can go on the web and read that. Yeah, that, that the same thing, you know, the, the same playbook they're, they're following now is very, very, it's eerily similar to the Nazis after the Reichstag fire of 1933. I believe it was February 24th or February 26th, 1933. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very crazy. I mean, we, we live in some crazy times. I mean, uh, pe- people and, uh, people need to wait. Go ahead, Mr. Benny. I was going to say, the, one of the worst things happened, though, when, when they exposed the parallel construction being done by the uh, DEA. Uh, the uh, Reuters, when they were interviewing one of the federal agents, the federal agents said, he told them, he said, this is such a great program, I just hope we can keep it secret. Hmm. Well, yeah. you know, when you marry secret intelligence agencies up with the police, you end up with a secret police. Wow. And, and we actually have a, a secret uh, uh, conviction system, a method of convicting people without giving due process. So, no, we don't really have an effective uh, judicial process now. No. Because they're subverting it. No, no doubt. Absolutely. They've taken our rights from us. You know, Mr. Benny, you know, the media, you know, we like to pick on these other nations, you know, like Iran. And we say Iran is the most tyrannical regime on the planet, even though we had them surrounded by military bases. And, and you know, they, they haven't nothing to us. They haven't done too much to they us. They might have a nuclear warhead, and yet we have them. So yeah, what's but, good but, for them, us, is not good for them. No, but, but, but you know, they, they, they try to paint Iran as, as this. And, and some of that may be true, but 
you know, to remove the 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 plank from Iran, you know, the, the toothpick from Iran's eye, we got to remove the plank from ours because we're we're way more uh, you know tyrannical than them. No, no one has clean hands here. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. Mr. William Benny, I, I surely appreciate your time. I think you're a great American, and I cannot wait for this movie to come out. Uh, we're going to fully support you, and we're going to spread the word. And I pray that we're able to see this movie here in New Orleans, and uh, you know whatever we can do to get the film here in New Orleans. You just please let us know. Okay, thank you very much. And man, we appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon. I'd love to have you back on when the movie comes out. Thank you, Mr. Benny. Thank, thank you. you. God bless. That's a great American right there. Please support him. GoodAmerican.org. And Mr. William Benny, he's the uh, only original NSA whistleblowers. Look, we'll be right back. 990 AM, uh, Battle of New Orleans Radio.